Let's talk about physics, page 1135, pages M through N. I first want to point out that in this section of the page, there are several formulas that are given. And I would suggest that you write down on a piece of paper, maybe a 3x5 card, 4x6 card, something like that, and uh, put these formulas on there so that you have them written down and we can refer back to them while we are working through the problems in this section. Notice it talks about frequency is one over T for time. Time is another name for the period, okay? So when you see period, just automatically think time. Time is always measured in seconds. <clears throat> so frequency would be one divided by the time in seconds and that Unit is going to come out in Hertz, H-E-R-T-Z, or abbreviated H-Z. Now to find the time, <clears throat> we could just take the number 1 on our calculator and divide by whatever the frequency is, whatever the Hertz is, and you will know how many seconds, right? We may use that for a couple of the problems that we're going to solve. Here is another chart that if you don't have this written down somewhere, I highly recommend you do so. We need to always have the mass in kilograms. If they give it to us in grams, we have to convert it back to kilograms. Length is always going to be in meters. Again, if they give us the problem in centimeters or kilometers, we have to do a conversion back to meters. Time should always be in seconds. We're going to have a few problems where they're going to give us the answer in, or the information in hours. And we have to convert from hours to minutes, minutes to seconds. Velocity is always in meters per second. So again, if they give us kilometers per hour, we have to convert to meters per second before we can solve the problem. Energy always is in joules. Force is in newtons. And then frequency is in hertz. All right, there are five steps that we're going to follow in solving any kind of a problem here on these pages. First of all, we need to ask ourselves, what is given? And I would suggest writing down because sometimes the information they give is kind of hidden in there. Or they may even give us information we don't need, but we can decide that later. Then make sure you identify what are we asked to find. They might use this at the beginning, you know, what is the length? or what is the period. So if it asks specifically, we know to look for that. Next, we want to look at our list of formulas and say which formula includes all the information that's given and includes the quantity that I'm solving to find. Once in a while, we may need to use two formulas, like for instance, we are supposed to use a force times a distance, but they maybe don't give us the force, they give us the mass. Well, we can always convert mass easily to be weight. Because the mass times 9.81 is the weight, and weight is a force. Alright, so there are a couple tricky ones like that where we have to first solve this formula, and then we can plug in. As we just talked about on the previous slide, we want to find out if there are any conversions of units and do that before we solve. Yay, now we can plug into the equation, the formula, and rearrange it and solve. We'll do some of those together in a minute. <clears throat> then the last thing is once you have an answer on the calculator, we have to do two things. One is go back and look at how many significant figures am I allowed to have and um, do a conversion. All right, maybe I have to round it off or something and then figure out what units we should include because it's very important to include units as part of our answer. All right, in the next video, we're going to look at a couple of the problems on page M and apply all of these things from this introduction lesson.